Hi everybody, I'm Antoinette, this is Good Owl Games, and welcome to March's monthly roundup video. The one where I talk to you about some of the changes to my board game collection. So March has been a bit of a funny month for me, because um, it felt like I played loads of games, but when I looked back to, you know, put this list together, I actually hadn't played half as many as I had thought. Although there's definitely been some new games coming in and out that were exciting to play, and at least one game that I played a lot of. Um, so that's always a nice surprise. I'm normally the kind of gamer that plays everything kind of once, um, and not a lot of the same game repeatedly. Um, probably should work on that, but you know, I think that's just the way I like to play games. Um, so yeah, so hello and welcome for those of you uninitiated, um, this is my monthly round of video and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about some of the new games I got for my collection, some of the games I've been playing and then a bit of chit chat about the channel and some personal stuff about me if you're interested in any of that and there are timestamps in the video so you can hop around as you choose but of course I'd love for you to stay and maybe subscribe if you like what you watch. Right, so that's all the promotion-y bits out of the way. I guess I should probably talk about some games. Um, okay, so let's check. So, game the first, um, and this is Woodcraft. Um, and this is a game that's co-designed by Vladimir Suchi, who is a designer whose games I have a love-hate, love relationship with. It's it's complicated, really. Um, and if you've been here for a while, you'll, you'll understand what this is about. And what happens is, is that uh, Vladimir Suchi will release a new game, we'll go out and we'll buy it, we'll play it and really enjoy the first play um, but then never really feel compelled to go back to it a second or maybe even a third time um, and I'm not sure what that's really all about. Um, I'm not sure what kind of toxic relationship we have going here because we'll end up getting rid of the game but then a new one will come out and we'll go buy it anyway. Um, I guess it's just I suppose we wish they had maybe a little bit more longevity or kind of a draw to pull you back in um, but here I am again with another new title um so woodcraft right what's what's it all about um you are, are an artisanal worker um you you create wooden items and the aim of the game is to fulfill orders um, you're going to need to do this through action selection and this comes in the shape of like a cool roundel that changes position as you take the various actions on it and dice management which represents your wood store and the different types of wood you have. So you're able to grow trees to create wood, you're able to splice and dice your wood, split the numbers into other numbers which is kind of cool and mostly you're fulfilling these orders um, and they can decrease in value the longer you hold on to them. Um, so like on the outset here this is a pretty straightforward game complete the goals get there although you know it's kind of a complex route to get there there aren't that many actions to do but there are a number of free actions so you can end up doing tons of those for the round and there are kind of different things you can do to enhance your actions as well you have like a little house and you can fill it out with people who will help you or kind of um, tools and stuff in the attic to give you bonuses but yeah at its heart it's pretty straightforward and, and easy going um, I don't know why I, I don't know I expected it to be more complicated than it is but it is quite satisfying to play with that roundel um do i want to go and play it a second time that's the real question yeah i want to play it again i want to make sure i played everything correctly is always one of those things i'd like to check um i don't want to judge a game on its first and only play either um but i did have fun playing it um is it very compelling i'm not entirely sure yet i think it needs another go but it's certainly very mechanical in nature and i think if you enjoy that kind of i make an action to do another action to do thing you know um it's got that feel to it so it's definitely fun in that respect so yeah so that's woodcraft i keep wanting to call it woodcrafters i don't know why i think it's because there's people on the cover of the box so second up on the list is something a little bit lighter and this is wormholes from aeg um wormholes is kind of one that we spotted in the shop and we're curious about because it's been a while since i played a space game um, and I thought, you know, that this could be something fun. Um, and from the back of it, it looks kind of cool. And I think my husband had heard it mentioned on a, a podcast and liked the sound of it. So we we're like, let's, let's try wormholes. That sounds like something we would do. Um, this is actually much more fun than it has any right to be because it's a game about being a space taxi. And what you're doing is you are traveling from planet 
to a planet um, and exploring as you do so. Maybe you're the first person to find this planet and you're picking up passengers and dropping them off wherever they want to go. Um, so it's a simple pick up and deliver. Um, what's interesting about this is that you can create a limited number of wormholes to help you traverse the map. So you can place a number one disc at one planet, place the other half of that number one disc at another planet and then hop in the wormhole and go from one side of the board to the other. The annoying part is everyone can use each other's wormholes, but you do have to give each other like a little bit of money to do so. But there's something interesting here about watching where everyone else sets up and then using it to your advantage. Um, so this should have been a little bit simple, I think, for my taste, but it was actually just kind of fun and satisfying. Um, the real puzzle here is, you know, traversing the board in the most efficient way possible and getting as many passengers um, to their destinations because they're kind of your victory points. Um, but it was, was really, really quick to play. I think we had to play it in under 20 minutes um, and it was easy to set up and it was kind of, yeah, it was fun. Um, surprising, I know, right? Normally I would like something a little meatier, but this was entertaining. Um, it's something I think I would definitely play with friends. Um, I think this would be a blast with more players because at two it was fun trying to figure out, well, where is he putting his number three wormhole and then I can use it to get to there. But with more players, it's got to be crazy. The board just has to be full of wormholes and that would be really exciting. I, I would love to see that. Um, so wormholes was kind of fun, quick and simple. Um, what's not to love? Yeah, I, I thought it was good fun. And now it's time for something completely different. Um, so every so often do you just try out a game that seems to be completely outside of your wheelhouse for no real reason. Um, and the reason for this is this is the tagline on the game box. So listen to this, right? Maybe you know it. And it says, a game of passive aggressive cohabitation. So this is Decorum um, from Floodgate Games. And <laughs> this one is odd because this is kind of a, a cooperative game about putting your furniture into a house, about learning to live together with somebody else and trying to make it such that your wants are fulfilled and so are your partners. <laughs> it's, it's a nuts idea. So what the, the game board is basically a house. You have a number of pieces that are different types of furniture um, or, you know, kind of wall hangings and things like that that will go in your home. You can paint the rooms different colours. And at the start of the game, um, it's done in a series of scenarios, by the way. So you open up an envelope and each of you gets kind of um, a description of who you are and what way you need your house to be. Um, and you don't tell each other this. You just go about taking turns, putting things out in your house or taking things away till you get to where you need to go. Um, so you do this for a number of rounds. And if you haven't kind of solved it by then, you get to have a heart to heart where you can tell each other one of the requirements that were on your card for, you know, for what would make you happy in the house. Um, and every time you put a piece out, your opponent gets to tell you what your opponent, I suppose you're playing together, but the, it feels very adversarial serial um that whether they get to tell you whether or not they like what move you've made so let's say I put a yellow lamp in the kitchen and they're like oh I, I like that that's great or I don't like that at all and you're trying to figure out what it is the, the pattern that they're trying to match while also creating your own um so I've played two games of this the the first kind of envelope um, was, it wasn't too bad actually, it was pretty straightforward, we managed that fairly handily. And then we went to the second one and it was a huge leap in difficulty. Um, there were so many more things to consider and we had so many more heart to hearts, but we got there in the end. Um, it's a very unusual and very unique game and this is something I didn't think that we would normally play. Normally kind of cooperatively games um, are kind of easy for us but because you're not you you are working together but you're also working for yourself it makes it quite interesting and I like the fact this game is so tactile you were literally literally lifting pieces on and off of your house um, to create you know what it is what it is your your end goal is um, so it's got that kind of nice touchy feely thing to it um, I was really disappointed to discover that each of the little plastic pieces that are parts of the house all came with layers of plastic on them you to peel off and it did not feel very environmentally friendly so that's a bit of a shame um, but otherwise this is unusual um, <laughs> so it comes with like a set number of scenarios depending on the number of players you have I think there's 20 plus for two players there's so many for three and so many for four um, clearly I didn't look at any of those um, but I think this could be really um, interesting it was just so unusual um, and what an unusual concept to have of kind of you know people 
people moving in together and trying to compromise and get what they want. So um, I applaud it for being unique. I think I'll definitely want to play more of this. I hope it doesn't get too much more difficult because I was tearing my hair out trying to figure everything out. It's not an, it's not an easy challenge, but um, I think there are a lot of people who really love something like this, you know? Um, so yeah, I had a good time with it. That's decorum. So I was tempted to bring this game in here and put it in the background to be part of the shot today, but I actually couldn't carry it. Um, so this might give you a hint as what it is. And this is Frosthaven from Cephalofair Games. Um, so yeah, I assume most of you know about Gloomhaven at this point. If you don't, it's this big, amazing dungeon crawling game um, where there is so much in the box it's actually ridiculous where you kind of you go on adventures you explore maps you um, level up characters you you do so much stuff there's a story like it's got it all right Gloomhaven kind of has got it all it's a beast of a game it's it's tough like it takes a lot of effort to set it up and to get it going and things but it is an absolutely wonderful game and I finished it a year or more ago now um, we completed all of the scenarios or at least all of the scenarios that led us to the end um, and since then then there has been a new game release which is Frosthaven which is similar to Gloomhaven but now with different stuff um, and I didn't back the Kickstarter for it at the time I think we thought that um, we would just get it when it came to, to retail if we really wanted to because I think by the by the time Frosthaven was being released on Kickstarter um, we were kind of tired of Gloomhaven and didn't really feel like playing another big, you know, story kind of driven, well, you know, Euro game, if you want to call it that. So we weren't in the mood for that. But um, this is where good salesmanship comes in, because um, as usual, once a week I visit my local game store, which is an hour's drive away. Um, you should go check out Happy Go Lucky if you um, happen to be down in Clonakilty in Cork or they have a website. And no, I'm not sponsored. I just go there a lot. Um, and we were in there picking up um, a different game. It might have been Wormholes. And um, the shopkeeper asked my husband, he goes, oh, you've no interest in a copy of Frosthaven, do you? Uh, so my husband walks out the door, comes back to the car, tells me, you know, do we want Frosthaven? So we go for our drive like we normally would. We went to the beach. We were debating, he was debating, do I want Frosthaven? Would I like it? I'm like, do you think we'll play it? Are we willing to play another big game again? And we thought about it. And by the time we come back around, we go back to the shop and pick up a copy of Frosthaven. Like that's good salesmanship right there. Um, so I'm super excited. Um, so far, we've only got to the point where you pop all the stuff out and try to fit it in the box. So one major improvement I've noticed so far from Gloomhaven is the fact it comes with trays inside it to keep all this stuff in so it's got storage solutions it used to be the case with Gloomhaven that if you opened it and popped everything out it wouldn't all fit back in the box um, so this looks like it's, it's a kind of better it's a kind of better with that so we sat down on Sunday to open it up and start popping everything out so we could play a game like two three hours later and we still haven't got through I don't know the 20 plus sheets of popping out you have to do and then there's all the sorting of the different decks and things and Side. so you know setting this game up is potentially a game in itself I suppose so we still don't have it ready so I haven't been able to play a game yet so I can't tell you anything about it um other than I am kind of excited um because it's been a while I suppose since we had kind of a, a big game like that and I'm not gonna lie there's something very exciting we had a very large box not sure why but um there's something about it when we came when you whip the lid off and it slides off and you're like oh it's just a treasure trove inside so i'm mean, just yeah it's exciting it, it kind of built its own hype um so i'm looking forward to playing it seeing what all the new characters are what kind of things we're gonna face um yeah i'm i'm totally feeling it and um, considering i had no interest in frosthaven about like a week ago so <laughs> it's definitely bringing the hype has anyone else got a copy of it how long did it take you to set it up that's what I want to know um, how do you find it compared to Gloomhaven because of course it's always going to be compared um, hopefully it's just as good and just as fun right so I've one little section left to go through and this is review copies and um, so I'm not going to talk too much about these games because there will be full reviews but just to let you know what's up and coming um, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is Pendulum from Stonewire Games and some of you may remember this came out a while ago and not everybody was particularly impressed with it um, but I often find if you give things a bit of time and let it settle down and then make your own decisions you might be surprised um, Tapestry did the same thing for me nobody seemed to like that but I really enjoyed it when I got to it like a year or so later um, Pendulum is a real-time game um, it's worker placement 
with sand timers and basically what you're trying to do is kind of gather support for the throne and you're doing this to your worker placement actions you're moving colors basically from one side of your board to another it is a race the first person to get all their colors across the finish line ends the game um but the fun part here is the sand timers each kind of worker placement zone has a timer and what that means is that your worker can activate when the sand timer is there it's kind of two rows right and the sand timer will move between each row in each section um, that sounds really complicated when I say it out loud but just imagine it's like you have two lines and, the, and it'll move from one to the other when it flips and you need your worker to be in the one the sand timer is in to be able to use it or you can have them waiting in the next lane for when the sand timer comes over um, the sand timers all run at different times so the real puzzle here is timing everything really well so you can get the most out of your workers um, so that they're not stuck somewhere waiting for a timer um, first impressions are it's incredibly clever it, like, I've played nothing like this second impression is that it's not particularly practical um, because there are things you need to touch on the board you need to be able to reach everything um, I had a hard time with some of that but I don't think it takes away from some of what this game is doing it is, it's uh, super super smart and I'll have a full review for coming for that soon so you know, hold on to your hats hopefully that won't be too far away the other game I have is this little box back here and it's called Roll Into Town and this is from an Irish board game designer so this is actually really exciting and it is a roll and write game about being a mayor of a town um, and it seems to be kind of focused on you go out and you explore and you see what resources you can have to build up your town um, so I haven't got around to playing it yet so this is the, this just arrived so um, that's next on the agenda but if you're into roll and write and maybe you want something a little bit different keep your eyes peeled for that review as well that'll be on the way soon so yeah um lots of new things this month lots of unusual things games i didn't think we would have bought i think sometimes it's just so nice to come home with a board game on saturdays <laughs> that you end up sometimes trying things you thought you wouldn't i think wormholes falls into that category and i'm really glad i did it was actually really good uh, so you never know what you might find at your gaming store if you go digging so Mm, that's all good so now i want to hear about what games you've been picking up this past month have you gotten anything very cool very exciting something you want to tell the world about because i would like to hear about it i am always um on the lookout for new recommendations for things and i'm sure people are too so feel free to leave a comment in the comment box that'd be cool all right so i'm going to move on to the games i have been playing which includes obviously a lot of the things i've just been talking about but sure i think there were a few others as well so first up on the agenda for this month's games I've been playing is one that's left over from last month. Um, so I need to talk about Autobahn. Um, this is from Alley Cat Games and it is a game about not just building routes but transporting items along the routes. Um, it's kind of it's a it's a card driven game um where you want cards of particular colors to be able to activate in particular routes and they all have different type of actions um like this this game is so colorful and so fun uh, also there's bureaucracy because we can't forget about that um there's a so yes there's a portion where you need your your little men to rise through the ranks um but the fun part of this is finding out like how you connect the different countries and things together um so that you can deliver goods you have little trucks with little goods like it's adorable you can also put out petrol stations so people have to pay to go past your road um which is great as well like initially it had a ticket to ride vibe for me and then suddenly it was like oh we're delivering the goods as well and then you had to really kind of switch gear a little bit and turn definitely more kind of euro game um this is beautiful by the way the the board is so colorful i love all the components um this is like a treat um to look at and to play with and i had an awful lot of fun with it um i want to play it again the first game was rough there were lots of rules we weren't getting quite right and then we're figuring out halfway through and it was a very long first play it took us i think it was nearly four hours to get the first play of this done but now that i've played it you know everything kind of you look back in retrospect and everything makes way more sense um so i'm looking forward to playing this again um to kind of solidify everything that i learned the first time around um but yeah this is kind of an exciting and fun game to play it was kind of chill as well there's 
it's thinky but still very um laid back i think is probably the word i want for it um unless of course someone takes a road you were planning on taking then it's just vicious um so yeah so that was autobahn yeah really like that must must pull that out again soon i'm hoping it'll be quicker and a regular play it has to be <laughs> So a little bit of good news left over from last month is the fact that I got a copy of Battlestar Galactica, the board game. Um, if you've seen the TV show, you might have heard of this. If you haven't, it's a really fun, cool, kind of semi-cooperative treasure space game where you're on a ship that just refuses to want to live and you're trying to make it back home before you run out of all your resources um and I picked it up last month just because it was something that I used to play a lot and I really really liked despite it being a three player minimum um I don't often have three players I would I would almost go to say never however I did get to have guests and there were enough of us to play Battlestar and it was bloody awful <laughs> the game was just as i remembered people um it, it all started out so well and then those pesky cylons ruined everything so there were there were five of us playing we were taking care of things in the ship and there was a lot of questioning over who was the cylon who was not the cylon um someone used an ability to check if i was the cylon i was not and then they started spreading rumors that i was the cylon it was bad and then one of the Cylons revealed and we're like oh oh gosh and they did some nasty things to the ship when they revealed and we're like okay we can handle this we got this um so that was one our one our, that was our ace pilot who left um and we're like cool we can do this and then there was a big crisis and then a second Cylon revealed who was also the other pilot and then the ship was surrounded by ships and we'd no one to shoot things it was disastrous um we tried to limp along for a little while but it just wasn't happening so yeah the Cylons won the game pretty quickly I think basically we got to do one jump um so yeah it was just yeah it was just as I remembered like miserable and sad because the, the game revolves around these kind of crises that happen um at the end of every round and everyone has to contribute cards of the the right colors to make it make it pass so you know there's a number you need to beat um and it the crisis just kept happening and we were uh yeah it's just just sad it's like oh more sad things happen in the ship but that that is yeah exactly how i remember the game being i guess it was better if you were the cylons because they were off laughing at us watching us suffer um but it was still a really fun game to play and i think it's one of those nice games that it becomes very social because there is an unknown element of who is the body and of course everyone is kind of hamming that up or questioning it or you know the, it creates the kind of repertoire that's um really really fun about who's the Cylon and who isn't um so that's what really makes the game but I'm glad I got to play it so that was its maiden voyage um I thought I would share with you about how disastrous it went um, <laughs> here's me thinking you know oh us humans will be safe we'll, we'll get all the way to glory uh no no we were destroyed um so yeah so that was Battlestar and there's one game I will talk about because I did say at the start of this video that I felt like I played a lot of games but I hadn't really um but I did play multiple games of this and this is Rise um and I talked about it last month as being the ultimate cube pusher of cube pushing um and I was surprised to want to play it again and again and again I played it a couple of nights in a row um and it's just it's just fun i think there's just something really satisfying about pushing cubes around i guess otherwise there wouldn't be a whole cube pushing genre um but rise is a game about running a city um what it's really about is going up tracks there are loads of them and you have little cubes and a lot of the tracks will interact with each other so if you move up on this one it'll let you move up in another one so there's lots of kind of connections going on and you'll want to get to particular points in particular tracks for bonuses and good things and sometimes bad things but mostly good things and that's really what the game is is about um you play it over a set number of turns because they're, they're kind of cards revealed at the start of each round so you determine what action you're doing um how much you're willing to pay as well to do that action and then you kind of get to interact with with all of the tracks but every time I pull it out it was just kind of more fun and I feel like I'm trying a strategy where at the start of the game I go all out to make sure I'm making as much money as possible every round um, and so far it hasn't gone terribly yet because normally it involves a lot of sacrificing and a giving up of victory points um, but I like feeling set up for the rest of the game no matter what happens but 
yeah I don't I don't think I found any like specific kind of plans or strategies in it but it's just it's just fun it's really chill and it doesn't take very long to play um so I really like Rise a lot I'm, I must like it a lot I would normally um not play the same game repeatedly I would play something else um so yeah so that's another vote for Rise after last month I thought I'd come back and report that it was going really well and our relationship is flourishing um, so yeah, so that's kind of everything I've been playing. You heard about most of it earlier, but here's some kind of extras. Um, I don't know if it's been a great month for games. Um, I've definitely picked up some unusual titles, but I don't think I've been playing as many games as I would like. Um, but I think I say that all of the time. Can everyone say that all of the time? We're just not playing enough games. It's probably true. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've been getting to the table. What have you been playing? Is there anything you've been playing back to back? That's what I want to know this month because I finally got to play something, the same game again and again and again. Do you do that when you play or do you hop around? And if you do play something back to back, what is it? Because um, I know some people play like the same game repeatedly, like Twilight Struggle or something like that, where, you know, it's got specific kind of plans you can, you can kind of go down or engage with or something like that. But um, I'd love to know if anyone else does multiple plays. It'll be fun stuff. Um, okay, so that's kind of the board gaming bit out. I'll go over to the chit chatty bit now if you want to join me. That'd be that'd be nice. So I can't decide whether I should start with the scary things or the good things. Um, and then I realised they're probably connected. Um, I don't know. Yeah, good things like to upset me quite a bit. But um, March has been an unusual month in that there's kind of... A bit of flux going on in my real life. My husband is changing jobs and is going to be working from home. And on the one hand, that's super exciting. But on the other hand, it is change. Scary change. Um, and so for whatever reason, my brain is just freaking out. It's having a hard, a hard time going because things are going to be different. And while this is all really awesome stuff, um, I wish I could switch my brain off so I could settle down a bit. So you might have noticed I've been slightly more quiet and things on slow social media because I just, just don't have the energy because I'm just too busy freaking out and worrying. Um, so I'm really chuffed I got this video made today because I wasn't sure I was going to. <laughs> um, and things like that. So yeah, that's the big excitement going on in the, the background um, it doesn't really mean anything much for the channel unfortunately um, other than maybe my husband will have to hear me make these videos once in a while um, but yeah um, it's just kind of un uh, just unsettling I suppose a little bit um, but in good news um, I've been taking more photographs of birds um, so Ooh, it's been really exciting because I did manage to get a bird lens I saved up to get one so it's like a it's a Tamron 150 to 500 millimeter bird lens and it's ginormous. It scared the absolute crap out of me when I got it home and realized how heavy it was and that it, I couldn't lift it very well. I, was, I, I don't know, it just, it scared, it scared the bejesus out of me. I'm finally settling into it a bit. I got a really cool strap to hold it onto me so I can wear it while I walk around, which to me is nuts, by the way. I'm dangling my big expensive lens off the side of me. Um, but it takes beautiful photos and it means I've been going on all sorts of bird adventures that I wouldn't normally. Um, they start in the back garden because, you know, it's where you got to start somewhere. Um, I went to a cool marsh last weekend to go spot some birds. I got to see one new one I hadn't seen before. And I got to go to a bird reserve that's actually relatively close to my house and was over there lovely and early last weekend to go see the birds and I got to see a whole bunch of them so it was really really exciting um and I I love being able to take nice photos of things um like I take photos of board games and stuff all the time and I do my best to do kind of outdoor photos when I'm outdoorsing this is a new level of photography I've not gotten to before which is holding something heavy really steady while there's something very tiny in the distance um but it's been fun. I think, yeah, I'm kind of liking the bird watching kind of thing. I don't know. I've always thought birds were kind of adorable. And we can blame Wingspan, really, for the rest of this hobby. Um, but yeah, that's been kind of interesting and new and scary all at the same time because I'm having to learn a new skill. And I thought it would be a little bit less of a transition than it has turned out to be. But um, it's led me to all kinds of exciting new places. We'll see where I end up next. Um, yeah, so that's been kind of cool. Um, I suppose the usual, the usual stuff keeps happening where I keep going to beaches and stuff like that. But now I go see birds and, you know, check out the board games. 
none of that's changing and stuff for the channel the channel's kind of quiet but I'm slowly but surely working my way through kind of um whatever I need to do I have a backlog of videos I have to get to um at least they're ready to go I think that's something positive um so I just need to keep getting them out there um because sometimes you know I, I don't know it feels like the the internet has changed a bit recently I think less people are online than were before it definitely feels less lively but I also feel like I have less energy to interact with people and that makes me kind of sad um because I would love to be able to do more of that um you know part of being kind of in the online world is community right um and that's you know I think that's such an important thing as well to lift each other's up each other, to lift each other up and to support each other right especially in the board game community because it is so small I know sometimes it feels like it's it's really big but really we're just one tiny corner of the internet um and I just I hate that I don't have enough energy to kind of engage with all of that stuff like I normally do I'm just I'm just doing my best to just put stuff out there and hope someone finds it interesting I don't have the power to go peddling my stuff at people um unfortunately I wish I did I think things would get further Further. um but for now yeah I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing and if you know things improve brilliant then you know <laughs> that's all I can hope for um but for now yeah the channel is toddling along I hope so anyway um and I still like making these videos and I still enjoy playing games so there's something to be said for that uh, I just hope my opinion is of any use to anybody out there it's hard to tell sometimes the internet's kind of a, a big and scary place um, but yeah, so I think like I'll wrap it up around around here. Like you know, I'm tr I I find this is the part of the month where I sit down and I try and think of all the good things that happened to me. <laughs> I'm like these are all the positives. Um, like I've been going to the cinema. I saw John Wick Four the other night. Um, not bad, not bad. Um, and so I'm still trying to head out during the daytime and stuff. But the weather has been rubbish, so none of that. Thank you all for watching. Um, hopefully you'll stay and tune in to the next latest videos. Um, I have some more coming, I promise. And until next time, yeah, take care of yourself, play some games and let me know what you've been up to. All right, everybody. Bye bye.